بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد continuing on in our study of the treaties of our Sheikh Sheikh uh, Ibrahim al-Rahili hafizallah ta'ala about the encouragement to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we reached some of the statements of the Salaf which the Sheikh used as evidence of the importance of following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and avoiding taqlid and other things of blind following individuals, parties, groups and sects and we left off where the Shaykh said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, it was reported on Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that he said, you will not go astray as long as you adhere to the athar, meaning the narrations of the Salaf. Again, f affirming for us the importance of following the Salaf of this Ummah. That's the, the methodology. If you say you follow the Sunnah, then follow the Madhab of the Salaf. It was reported upon Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, it is obligatory to fear Allah and be steadfast. Follow the sunnah and do not innovate. So the mu'min follows and they do not innovate. Umar ibn Abdulaziz, rahim, uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, uh, was reported to have written to some of his workers and said, Verily, I advise you to fear Allah. And be diligent in following his commands and his sunnah and the sunnah of the, his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and leave what heretics have innovated after him in his sunnah and suffice with his assistance. Therefore, you must stick to the sunnah for it is a protection for you by the permission of Allah. Know that the people never began an innovation except that what passed before it was a proof of it and lessened, and verily the sunnah was established by the one who knew the mistake, error, stupidity, and depths of contradicting it. So suffice yourself with that which the people before you were pleased with, for they were the predecessors. They possessed knowledge and stopped, and possessed insight and sufficed. They understood the affairs more, and the benefit in them more so than anyone else. Allahu Akbar. What a profound and beautiful statement of Umar ibn Abdulaziz radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, to have made. And that shows us the importance of adhering to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, following the madhab of the salaf of this ummah, and sufficing where they suffice. Stop where they suffice, where they stopped. Do not go beyond in your explanations and in your... Uh, understandings to try to go beyond the, what the Salaf did because that's how you find that many of us fall into mistakes and may Allah forgive us and bless us and guide us all. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Then the Shaykh said, Hafadullah Ta'ala, he said, a Sha'bi uh, said, whatever those people say from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then accept it. And whatever they say from their opinion, then throw rocks at them. Rahimahullah. What a beautiful and profound statement of our Salaf. Again, let's read it again. Whatever those people say from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then accept it. Whatever they say from their opinion, then throw rocks at them. If we take that as a criterion, I'm not encouraging people to throw rocks at people. However, if we take this as our criterion, that when we hear someone give us an authentic hadith, now that doesn't mean that they might not have a false understanding of the hadith. They may not. They might try to misinterpret and misrepresent the meaning of the uh, the hadith. But whenever someone gives you kitab or sunnah, accept it, even if it's from ahla bid'a, even if it's from ahla bid'a, you have to accept it because they're giving you the dalil from Allah Azza wa Jal, who makes no mistakes, who's who's perfect, and his speech is perfect, Subhanahu wa Taala, and they're giving you. From the blessed messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa his speech, if it's authentic. So we accept that. 
But when we go to the understanding, then we return to the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anu majma'in. How did they understand this? How did the Salaf of this Ummah understand this? This is the point of where it can be a contention, of where you might have disagreement with someone. But we accept the truth wherever it comes from. And a beautiful statement that the Salaf uh, uh, said, and I've heard this countless times from many of our mashayikh, Sheikh Rabi uh, has mentioned this countless times, and many of our ulama of Ahlul Sunnah that are our contemporary scholars, and may Allah bless them all and, and raise them all and forgive them all and bless us to follow their example. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. And this statement is, Ya Rafal Rajal Bil Haq Wala Yarif Al Haq Birjal O Kemakal that we know the truth or we know the man by the truth. We do not know the truth by the man. Meaning, so just because Sheikh so-and-so said something, that does not mean that it's the truth. If the Sheikh is known for the sunnah, you give him husn al and you benefit. But that doesn't mean he doesn't make a, he might not have made a mistake in that judgment. And if you have the tools to look into those judgments, then you must look into that because it's not permissible for you to just blind follow in everything, and especially in uh, affairs of aqidah and creed, so, and, and minhaj, and methodology. So we know the man by the truth. So meaning that we inspect the truth, and if what the man says is in accordance with the truth, what the sheikh says, what the scholar says, what the imam says, what the da'i says, what the talib al-ilm says, if it's in accordance with the truth, we accept that. But if it's in contradiction to the, cru the truth or in opposition to the truth, we don't accept that. We move on. It was reported on Al-Zuhri that he said, Cling to the Sunnah is success. Al-Uzai said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Adhere to the Athar, from the Salaf. Even if the people reject you. And beware the opinions of men. Even if they beautify them for you in speech. For verily the affair is clear. And you are on the straight path. He also said be patient upon the sunnah. And stop where the people stopped. And say what they say. And refrain from where they refrain from. And traverse the path of your righteous predecessors, for verily what was sufficient for them is sufficient for you. Allahu Akbar. This statement does not need, I want to say much, I want to say some things, but I'm going to refrain. And I'm going to read this statement again. Because it's so profound. Both of these statements of Imam al ozai rahimahullah ta'ala, are, are, are very powerful statements, which if we practice, we will not fear the fact that people blame you for such and thing, such, such and such. Or they say you're extreme, or you say Salafis are this, or, or Ahl Sunnah is this, or they criticize you for this. But if you adhere to this, you're safe. Imam al ozai said, Adhere to the Athar from the Salaf, even if the people reject you. And beware the opinions of men, even if they beautify them for you in speech. Allahu Akbar. Verily the affair is clear, and you are on the straight path. He also said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, be patient upon the sunnah. Again, be patient upon the sunnah. And stop where the people stopped, and say what they say, and refrain from what, where they refrained. Or refrain from what, from what they refrained from. And traverse the path of your pious predecessors, of your righteous predecessors. For verily, what was sufficient for them is sufficient for you. Allahu Akbar. Rahimahumullah jami'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all the salaf. And radiallahu ta'ala anhum.
اجمعين على صحابة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أبو عالية رحمه الله تعالى said to some of his companions learn Islam if you learn it then do not desire anything else besides it you must adhere to the straight path for verily the straight path is Islam do not go astray from the straight path to the right or left Cling to the sunnah of your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and beware the desires that places between its people enmity and hatred. This statement I, I do want to discuss. Learn Islam. Abu Ali rahimahullah ta'ala said, Learn Islam. If you learn it, then do not desire anything else besides it. You must adhere to the straight path, for verily the straight path is Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ هَذِ الصِّرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Verily, this is my straight path. So follow it and do not follow the various paths. Abu Ali then said, Do not go astray from the straight path to the right or the left. Cling to the sunnah of your Prophet ﷺ and beware the desires that places between its people enmity and hatred. Because bid'ah, that, that puts between the hearts enmity and hatred. Sunnah does not put between the hearts enmity and hatred except for Ahl bid'ah. Except for Ahl al-Kufr wa Zambaka. The Shia, they hate us. They want to see, they, they, they take pride in spilling our blood. They hate Ahl sunnah So don't be deceived, Ayul Ahbab. And other people from Ahl Bid'ah, they take pleasure at the downfall or demise of Ahl Sunnah. And so, when you call them back to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you try to correct somebody, you say, this is from the Sunnah, the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi said this, and this was the understanding of the Salaf. And they say, brother, in this time, brother, in this age, Brother, a more modernistic approach is, Brother, I have a more secular understanding. This causes in their heart, although we can't open their heart, we can't see, but we see it in their actions, we see it in their statements, we see it how they treat you. They don't, they don't, it, it causes enmity. Why? Because you established the, the hujjah. You established the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They felt it was too extreme. It wasn't modern enough. It wasn't secular enough. It hurt their, their, their friends' feelings when you corrected them in Aqidah, when you corrected them in belief, when you corrected them in methodology and madhab and minhaj. Wallahu musta'an. It was reported on Ibrahim al nakhai that he said, if the companions of Muhammad radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een wiped over a toenail, then I would not have washed it. Look for benefit in following them. Again, Follow the madhab of the salaf. Follow the madhab of the salaf. And we'll end there and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.